Today we are going to be talking about this, the new Mambo radio from TBS. Now the Mambo is the latest radio from Team Black Sheep and it features their new Tracer wireless radio system built in. Today we're going to take a closer look at the radio itself, I'm going to give you an overview, walk you through some of its features and capabilities, we're going to take it apart, have a look at what the build quality is like, and then at the end of the video I'm going to give you my thoughts having spent a bit of time with this radio over the last couple of weeks. Now, in my use of this radio, I have been using it mostly with Crossfire, but a little bit with Tracer as well. Today's video is not really going to be concentration on the wireless systems itself, it's more going to be about the radio, and in a future video I will be talking more about Tracer versus Crossfire and things like that. But today we're going to be concentrating on the radio itself, and whilst we will discuss the Tracer options, really it's about the handset more than anything. Anyway, let's get on with this video and let's take a closer look at the Mambo itself. The Mambo is the latest radio from TBS and it features their Tracer wireless radio system built in as standard. Whilst the radio doesn't support Crossfire out the box, it does have a module bay on the back that you can plug a module into. Now the Mambo comes in a small cardboard box with a slogan on the side from Hunter S. Thompson. Taking a closer look inside the box, when you lift the lid you'll find a piece of cardboard along the top that has QR codes printed on it for the manual as well as the downloads for the TBS Agent X software and information on the side. Below this you'll find two little envelopes which contain a set of springs for the remote control sticks, this is a spear set, as well as a little envelope that contains an allen key as well as additional screws. Then. The radio itself is located at the bottom of the box below a tissue and the radio is held in place with some nice recycled cardboard packaging. Taking a closer look at the handset itself, as you can see it has much of the features and capabilities that you would expect from a modern radio. At the top you will find various switches as well as the TBS Mambo logo and at the bottom next to the LCD screen you will find the Team Black Sheep name as well as the Tracer logo to tell you what it's got on board. Now this radio features four three position switches, two potentiometers, as well as two switches on each corner, one latching, one momentary. It has Hall Effect gimbals with trim controls either side and features a three and a half inch LCD screen. Either side of the screen at the bottom, it has its page, menu and exit buttons as well as a rotary encoder on the other side. The power button on this radio is located in the centre right next to the hoop of the neck strap and to turn it on you simply press and hold until the radio Welcome powers up. Software wise these radios are running a forked version of OpenTX called Freedom TX. Now the idea of Freedom TX was to allow TBS to actually integrate their radio system functionality like Tracer and that would then get merged back into the master OpenTX build in the future and then the radios would be able to actually run OpenTX once that was done. However at the point of me making this video that has still not taken place and these radios are still running this forked version of OpenTX called Freedom TX. Now Freedom TX does have pretty much all of the same features and functionality as OpenTX, however some key things don't work, and specifically the OpenTX Companion. These radios are not compatible and that means you cannot move your radio settings and your model settings from existing OpenTX radios easily over to this one via the Companion. Now for updating firmware, TBS do have their own separate software called TBS Agent and you can get that based in a browser as well as on their website as a download, but hopefully in the future these radios will gain full OpenTX support but you do need to just understand that if you do transfer it over from another OpenTX radio, you may have to either do it manually by transferring the files on the SD card, I haven't tried that myself, but that probably should work, or you're going to have to do the settings manually. Now, one other thing I just want to add on software is because it is running this custom build, they have integrated the Betaflight Fly app, which is pretty much standard now, but you also have their Agent app installed as well, which allows you to adjust the settings on the inbuilt Tracer module, as well as the Crossfire module if you're using that in the bay. 
Moving around to the top of the radio, you can see the two shoulder buttons as well as a molding mark in the middle. Now you'll notice that there is no external antenna on this radio, and that is because the tracer antenna is built into the PCB inside. However, there is a molding mark there that allows you to fit an external antenna should you want to, and there is a standard UFL connection on the PCB inside. Moving around to the rest of the radio, on the bottom you will find a USB-C charging port as well as an audio output jack. On the back you will find a module bay as well as the battery bay doors at the bottom. Now this radio doesn't come with batteries as standard and you need to supply two of your own 18650 cells to be able to actually use it. As I've mentioned at the top, there is a standard JR style module bay that allows you to plug in things such as crossfire should you wish to do it. Now the overall casing of the radio is made of plastic with it being slightly rougher on the outside edge and there are some rubber inserts located on each side of the radio just helping you to grip it. Now just showing you this radio size compared to a few others, you can see it here up against the T16S as well as the DJI FPV radio and it basically sits somewhere in the middle of the three. Okay, so to talk about this radio's fit, finish and how it actually feels in the hands. Talking about size and weight first of all, I really like the size, shape and feel of this radio. It sits somewhere between the DJI FPV radio and the T16S. For me, I did always find the T16S was a little bit large, but the DJI radio for me was about right and this sits between the two. It feels nice in the hands and the reach on the sticks is about perfect for me so if you are someone that does find the t16 a little bit large i think you will love the mambo now with regards to the quality of the switches and the controls the control sticks feel nice and smooth they are hall effect sticks and the spring tension is nice on them that is adjustable you can also change the springs as well and i've got no concerns over the gimbals at all the switches feel okay they don't feel the greatest quality switches in the world, but they certainly don't feel the cheapest. When you switch them, they do feel okay, but there is a little bit of movement when they are in each position, and it is quite easy to knock them if you are moving your hand around. There are radios where I felt the switches have a lot more of a clunk to them when they're moving into each position. I can't comment on the longevity of them because I've only been using them for a few weeks, but overall, they feel okay. The control potentiometers also feel nice and stiff as well and they won't move by themselves and again I've got no concerns with them at all. Now moving over to the buttons on this radio this is where things for me get a little bit more mixed. The power button frankly I don't like it at all. It has a horrible feel to it. It even is quite difficult to turn on at times. You can find yourself pressing it and releasing it before the radio actually turns on. I would have much rather they put a proper switch or a slide switch on it. It's okay it does its job but because it is located around the area where you would hang your neck strap it can be a little bit difficult to get to at times it's it's one of the areas i feel they probably could have improved on the overall button feel on these down here as well as the rotary potentiometer is good no issues there either and the screen on this is nice and bright no problems at all it's of a decent size and you can easily see what's going on it's not as big as on the t16s or the tyrannis but it does what you need a screen to do Moving around to the switches on the top, these feel okay. You've got a momentary on that side there, and then you've also got the latching switch here. They do feel a little bit flexible in the sense of you do think, mm, I'm not sure how they'll hold up over time, but I've had no problems with them in flight. I will say I'm not sure how much of a fan I am though of this latching switch for my arming or disarming. I have been trying to get used to it, but I do find it's a bit of a fiddle. I would have preferred a proper toggle switch myself, but that's a preference thing for me more than anything else. Now, 
Talking around some of the other things on this and the fit and finish. Now, there are some things on this where I think there should be some improvement. For instance, my radio has some moulding marks on the plastics. I'm not talking about where you can put the radio through there at the top. I'm talking about around the bottom. There's a couple of moulding marks down there. And there's just a feel that the plastics aren't 100% on this one. For instance, there is some gaps there. They don't quite line up around the switches on the sides. And there is a bit of movement there if you press them. That's mostly because there's only four screws that hold it closed. That does allow for quick and easy access, but it just means that the shell doesn't quite clamp up as tight as it could. Also, something that I've noted on mine is that my module bay is very loose. I'm using this with a TBS Crossfire module and it will actually rattle. At the moment, I've got a piece of foam in there, but if I take the piece of foam out, put the module back in, you can see that there's quite a lot of movement. And if I put it to the mic, you can hear it rattling away. And if I shake the radio, you can actually hear that rattling. Now, it's easily fixed by simply getting a piece of nice soft foam, putting it in the bay, pushing the module in, and that makes it go away. But it is a bit of a shame that you do see little quality issues like that. Overall, I have to say the feel of the radio is nice. There's just one or two little things that do let it down from a fit and finish and quality point of view. Next, what we're going to do is pop the covers off and take a look inside and we'll just have a quick look at what the actual build quality is like before we come back at the end and I'll give you my thoughts. So to get inside this radio, the first thing you need to do is remove the four screws that are located on the back. It is simply one, two, three, four. These are hex screws and once you remove them, the case will very easily lift off. There are no wires between the back of the case, so don't worry, and you can even leave the batteries in place if you wish. Now inside you will find the adjustments for the gimbals, you have the adjustment for the throttle as well as the adjustments on the other side of the gimbals to allow you to adjust the tension and the other adjustments as you would usually be able to do. Now if you did want to adjust them you can simply tighten or loosen the screws to adjust the tension on the throttle just to get it how you like it to feel out of the box. Taking a closer look at the PCB, as you can see, the overall design inside is tidy. The finish of the soldering and the electronics is good as well. There is very little wiring in this radio and all of the switches are actually directly mounted to the PCB at the top. You can see in the middle there is a little wire through the hole and you can then see the switches on each corner located at the top are also directly soldered to the PCB with a small sliding rod. Around each screw on the PCB is a label and it actually tells you what screws hold the PCB to the front panel. To remove it you simply remove the screws that are labelled front. Also, interestingly, at the bottom right hand corner of the PCB, there's a module XF Nano RX position slot. Now, we don't know what this is for, but clearly it's something for future use. Now, to strip this radio down, you first of all need to remove this wire for the speaker in the centre and then remove the screws that are labelled front, as well as removing each nut that are around the switches on the front. Once you have done that, you can gently lift the PCB out, but do be careful, and I would advise rotating it 180 degrees because there is a very thin ribbon cable as well as power cable for the LCD screen located at the bottom, and you need to remove this before actually removing the PCB. Now we can see this side of the PCB, you can find that the tracer module is located under the can in the middle towards the top. We have the main CPU in the middle at the bottom. We have the Wi-Fi module on the left. Looking at the switches, these are soldered to the PCB directly at the top. And as you can see that they're on a bit of an angle, this will make them a little bit of a challenge to replace should you need to do so, but it isn't impossible. Looking at the top of the radio PCB, you will find the built-in antenna for the tracer module. Also below this is a UFL connector, which will allow you to put an external antenna on should you wish to. Now, the SD card for this radio is located on the inside and it's held in place under some tape on the right-hand side of the PCB. You can't easily access this externally, but it is there should you wish to do so. Also, you can see the rotary encoder is located just below this on the board as well. 
Looking at the plastic front panel, you can see that the LCD screen is mounted directly to it. And you can also see where the buttons are pressed in place with the plastic, as well as the speaker's location as well. Now, the power button on this, as I've said, is a push to make button directly on the PC. B, and this is actually actioned by pressing the button on the front and you can see that very small amount of movement in the lever as I do it. Just one thing I noted with regards to the shoulder switches, which is the momentary as well as the latching one, mine were a little bit stiff. And actually, when you look at them, the rods that they slide on were completely dry. There was no lubrication on them at all. So before I put the radio back together, I put a small amount of silicon grease on both rods on either side, as well as a little bit on each button, just to make them a little bit smoother overall. Now, just before I wrap this one up and give you my final thoughts on this radio, I do want to talk a bit about the wireless system it includes as standard, and that is the built-in tracer system, because when you are buying this radio, you are getting tracer included. Now, if you don't know what Tracer is, it is the latest wireless system from TBS that offers ultra low latency, long range, but on the 2.4 gigahertz band. Like Crossfire, it allows you to get much more range than you would traditionally get on a standard radio system. And whilst it is still using the likes of 2.4 gig, it should outperform most systems apart from things like Express LRS. Now, whether you did want to step into Tracer now or not, you are getting it as standard and it is something that you should take into account because the cost of the Tracer module alone is $50, $60. So if it was something you were looking to get into, buying the Mambo gets you that included as standard. Okay, so to give you my thoughts on the TBS Mambo. Now, just to be clear, this is the standard edition. There is a ethics version of this radio, which has a different outside shell, slightly different coloring and some other changes as well, like a kickstand. However, obviously my thoughts are going to be on the standard one. Now, I will say I really like this radio overall. It isn't perfect, but it is going to become my daily driver. I'm really happy with the size and weight and how it feels. It isn't perfect. And as I've said, there are some things on it which I think could be improved. The switches feel okay. The sticks are good. And for me, the tracer system is doing for the most part what I need it to do, but I am flying it a mixture of tracer and crossfire. And we'll talk about that in a future video. Now, overall, it's a really nice radio, but there are some things, as I said, could be improved. Those molding marks on the casings or the discoloration in places, it's minor, but it is something I did pick up on. And it's a shame about the power button. That really is the biggest bugbear for me on this radio. It would be much better to have a better switch. And I would have preferred if it had had crossfire in as standard rather than tracer. And that way I wouldn't have had to buy the module, but it is worth taking into account that this is a fairly cheap radio. You can feel that at times in some of the fit and finish, as I've already showed you, especially with the bay module rattling and just some of the plastics that don't line up at the side. But this radio is about £140 or $140. So whilst I am being quite picky on some things, you do need to take the cost into account. And even coupled with the Crossfire module, it's only just over £200 or $200, which still makes it a fairly cheap radio overall. From a quality feel, I'd say it's on par with something like the T16. In some ways, the T16S does feel a little better, but it is on that area of quality overall. And I think it's a fair quality for the price, that is for sure. In some ways, I felt I was expecting more from TBS. But I don't feel you're not getting what you've paid for. In some ways, I wish they'd have actually put the price up a little bit and just improved the quality a little bit there. Overall though, I have to say, I really like it and I am going to be using it as my daily driver. Now, as with all of these things, the thoughts I've given you are entirely my own. I'm really interested though in hearing what you think about this radio. So please do let me know in the comments. Please let me know if you've had any problems. Please let me know if you don't agree with me. If you have found this video interesting, 
please do consider hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. If you'd like to support the channel to allow us to keep buying products like this to be able to make reviews on, there are links to buy me a coffee as well as Patreon in the description of this video too. It is only by you guys using them am I able to keep buying products to be able to talk about. Anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you found it useful. In the next couple of weeks, we will be talking about Tracer as well as Crossfire more. So please do hit the subscribe button for that one and don't forget to hit the little bell next to it as well. Please stay safe and I will speak to you guys again soon.